<laughs> well, Lord, this is uh, take two of this. Um, please forgive me, Lord, um, for my mis missteps and the uh, one and trying to do this a little few moments ago. Um, oh, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, these times are so short. Please, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen your body. Quicken us, Lord. May we have courage in you, Lord. May we have boldness, Lord, to speak your word, to uh, proclaim your word, the King James Bible, the real Bible, to live as in samples in these times, and to always have our eyes and our ears open, especially our ears, Lord, that we may just be joyful in the coming of the blessed hope, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Lord, there are many mockers and deceivers out there who are filling the hearts of the lost and the false Christians with so many lies. May we be steadfast, unmovable, and strong in you, Lord. No, excuse me, Lord. May we be weak, that thou, O Lord, may be strong in us. And Lord, may every single brother and sister in the body of Christ take heed unto what you have called each of us to do. And may we do what you have called us to do in your strength, not ours. Lord, we ain't seen nothing yet. And Lord, those of us who are truly saved and born again, we're we getting out of here before it gets really, really, really bad. And Lord, anyone who is ignorant, let them be ignorant. Anyone who doesn't want to hear, that's their problem. But they will know, Lord, that you have sent us, Lord Jesus Christ, your body, Father, out. And Lord, may our focus be on that which is pertinent to these times, Lord, and not be distracted by things that don't really matter. When people are looking, may they see Thou, O Lord. And when people are listening, may they hear You, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Speak to Your people, Lord. And Lord, like, like in the video that I was trying to do just before this one and messed it all up, <clears throat> thank You for <laughs> rebuking me. And telling me that, hey, Brad, you need to be a little bit more disciplined. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Father, we await you and we await our call. Be caught up. And Lord, rebuke the devils. Shut their mouths. And Lord, I pray. That one son or daughter of Israel may hear the truth and come to you through repentance and calling your name and believe on you and be saved and born again. May a Catholic have their eyes opened unto the truth and may they repent of their self pride and thinking they're a good person and putting their stock in the sacraments of mystery Babylon. May the lost Lord hear your word and be cut to the heart and broken and come to you, Lord, and call on your name. Be saved and born again, Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on what you have done 
and trust on you alone, not us, not we, but thou, O Lord. And Lord, rebuke the brethren who pile upon excuse, upon excuse, upon excuse. I love you, Lord. And we love you, your body. Bless this, if you will. Again, if I stutter or spit or splutter through this, Lord, may you be glorified. I am weak, Lord. Come on. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Amen. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible. Uh, this is not uh, this is not the normal Bible that I use for videos. Uh, that one's kind of falling apart, and um, so moot point. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and go with me in the King James Bible, the real Bible. Okay. 1 Peter chapter 4. Now, when it comes to the book of 1 and 2 Peter, we have to remember there is some dispensational things within the books of 1 and 2 Peter. 1 Peter, you can make a valid argument that his audience is on to Jewish people, save Jewish Christians, okay? But there are also parts within 1 Peter and in 2 Peter that kind of cross dispensational lines. There is doctrine within 1 and 2 Peter that is definitely pertinent for us today. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? But we have to remember these things, brethren. Okay? We do. With that said, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12, on to verse 19. Okay, go there. And uh, I gotta I gotta mention this. What? What? You can't you can't handle a long video, huh? You don't got time to spend Time with the Lord and His Word, the King James Bible, the real Bible? Huh? What? Who has time, right? You gotta move, you gotta move. You need it quick. Yeah. 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 Don't don't feed me your excuses, brother, sister. Don't feed me that. Well, you're gonna try it what? 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 Seriously. Yeah, most of us have the attention span of a gnat. Yes. But what is it with you? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Any of you who have watched any of my videos, you know that I really, I really have, you know, I'm really on you, brethren, for making excuses. It's going to come a time, brethren. Where you're going to wish you had spent just a little bit more time in this book. That you would have spent a little bit more time in prayer. And not be concerned with the cares of this world. I don't care if your attention span is the attention span of a gnat. this is too long for you, then go away. Okay? You need your little shot in the arm dosage of some spiritual things? What? Can you not endure sound doctrine? You might not want to hear that. But tough. I love you. 
You need to get serious. Brethren, the Lord rebuke you for your excuses. Okay? Now, first, <laughs> what is it? Pedro Uno. <laughs> No, Pedro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. <laughs> Pedro, uno, chapter, cuatro. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like I said, I, I got quite a bit of Spanish blood in me, so. Thank you, pardon. Anyway, enough. First Peter, chapter four, beginning at verse 12 on to verse 19 to end the chapter. Follow me along in the scriptures. Don't, don't. <sighs> Don't just sit there. Okay? Let's go. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Busybody. Too busy? You ain't got time to sit there, listen, search the scriptures. Oh, boo-hoo. Boo-hoo-hoo. You bring a tear to my glass high, my glass eye. Yeah, I'm so sorry for you. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. Anyway. Verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian... Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. 17. For the time is come. <laughs> the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing as unto a faithful creator. Now look at verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Now, some of you heretics out there and some of you fake Christians who are in love with the Jesuit pagan here in America, 501c3 government controlled church buildings. It's talking about the house of God. It's a building. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 25 on to verse 32 to close out that chapter. Okay? Come on. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 25 on to verse 32. Some of you might be like, oh, Brad, you're just going over the same scriptures. Uh, hello? Uh, hello, is anyone home? Hello? Do you not see what's going on? Now, we're not supposed to be troubled by these things. Should we be afraid as Christians, saved, born-again, King James Bible-believing Christians? No. No. But what are your excuses? What are you expecting? 
brethren, I love you. To hell with your excuses. Oh, Brad! Sh shut up. Shut up. Seriously. I love you. Somebody's got to say that to you. Some of you. Not all of you. But some of you. To hell with your excuses. Now, the house of God. Today, in the time of the Gentiles or the Christian dispensation, whatever you prefer, church age is, par uh, is a problematic term. I don't know where that uh, uh, phrase was coined. A uh, brother in the Lord asked me, you know, made a mention to it. And it's like, I don't know either, you know. But what is the house of God? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 on to verse 32. Okay. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. You can give place to the devil by what you allow into your house, into your mind, into your ears, into your heart. Letting people using manipulation tactics to get the best of you. Sinning when you're angry, blaspheming, cursing. Some of you getting violent. That's giving place to the devil. Okay? It's a good thing to have emotion about the right things. I get emotional. I know some of you are bothered when I get mad and spit. But you know what? I don't care about that. I love you. I really do. I don't really care about your feelings. I care about you, my brethren. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, Charismatics teach that today, in the time of the Gentiles or the Christian dispensation, that the Holy Ghost comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. Okay? Here, I'm going to offend you now. <clears throat> That's nonsense. That's a clear mark of of someone who doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. And that's the root of it. You know? Some guy in one of the videos that I uh, kind of mirrored or whatever from Brother Bob's channel uh, mentioned to me, well, something about not knowing or something. And about what Harbinger was harping on, I didn't get what his point was. But And thanks to Brian that he, he showed me, you know, he, he addressed it. But see, the root of the problem is someone who is teaching you that the body of Christ is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Number one, they're anti-Christ. Okay, I'm excluding the novice and the babe. Okay, but someone diligently, vehemently teaching that and defending that, they're anti-Christ. Okay, and the root of it is that they are anti-Christ and they don't rightly divide the word of truth. See, if you are not dispensational... That's what happens to you. Look at the post fivers. They are non-dispensational. That's what happens when you don't rightly divide this book. Okay? Let's go. Continuing. See, in verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Whether you like it or not, you're sealed. You can really screw your life up as a saved, born-again, King James Bible-believing Christian. You can really make a mess of it. You can screw up, you can sin, and you can lose rewards, you can be chastened, you can lose your health, job, marriage, friends, brothers, sisters, 
the shoes off your feet, the clothes off your back. You can lose a lot of stuff down here. You ain't going to lose your salvation. But your life down here can be a living hell. And as it says in the book of Job, you'll get into heaven by the skin of your teeth. See, because you're sealed. You're sealed. And woe unto you who go against what is taught in Romans chapter 6. Read it on your own time. Okay? About justifying your sins. Woe be to you. Woe be to you. 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking put away from you with all malice. He's talking about sanctification, a changed life. The Lord will change your life, but he doesn't hold a gun to your head, forcing you to do anything. Because if he did, guess what? You'd be a robot. He wants your heart and he wants your mind. You shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul. Okay, I just paraphrase that. Thank your pardon. Let's continue. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. There ain't one saved, born-again, King James Bible-believing Christian that I have anything against. No one has hurt me. And to those of you who I've offended and who I have hurt, I am sorry. Please forgive me. I repent. But I know that the times call for diligence and boldness. And if you don't like repetition, then again, I love you. Go away. Okay? Enough of the excuses. And let's look at one more part about what the house of God is. Okay? Another part. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 14. Paul, an apostle of, G uh, of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him. Chosen us in him. Okay? Uh, I just lost my place. Okay. Chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. There is only one name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. And when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, broken of yourself, of your pride, knowing that you ain't good and that you can't save yourself and that you Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, on what he did for you, the payment that he paid to cleanse you, to save you. Call on him. Ask him to save you. Okay? It's that simple. The hard part is getting over yourself. Okay? Once you are saved, then you are of the elect. Election is within salvation not that God has chosen this guy this guy this guy to be saved without their choice of will because remember God doesn't hold a gun to your head okay neither are there those who are chosen you're going to hell you're going to hell you're going to hell without their say again God ain't holding a gun to their heads okay you ain't a robot okay comprende Let's continue. Having predestinated us, the predestination is salvation in Jesus Christ. Okay? The Lord rebuke you Calvinists. 
you Calvinists got a little ego trip going on, don't you? Like Jonathan Edwards was a Calvinist. Yes, he was. Okay? Was, um, was Jonathan Edwards a saved man? I have no idea. I really don't. That's beside the point. Let's continue. Having predestinated us onto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. You know, if you just read the text, Calvinism is blown out of the water. Okay? According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, that we Gentiles are grafted into the promises of the Jew, of Israel, and that we are brought in to make the Jew jealous. You know, a lot of you have problems with that, but you got to deal with it, okay? You've really got to deal with that, okay? Continuing. According to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. Predestinated. You're saved and born again, you are going to heaven. You are predestinated to go to heaven. Okay? See, Calvin, who was a philosopher, beware lest anyone spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Okay? He taught pre uh, predestination was election without your will, without choice. Okay? God doesn't force you to be saved. God doesn't force you to be lost. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. That we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom, ye all, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, okay, yes, believed, yes, but how do you come to that belief? Okay. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Again, you are sealed. Once saved, always saved. Today, in the time of the Gentiles or the Christian dispensation. Okay? Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The redemption. The resurrection. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And how do you come to believe? Oh, of course. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, on to verse 10. Okay, now, some of you have a real big problem with this. You're called easy believers or vain believers. Because you're trusting in your works. You're trusting in your belief. I trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read, okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, on to verse 10. For by... Read this out loud with me, okay? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Now, hold on. 
for by grace a gift the greater blessing the lesser for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God if some of you would just read the text but then again this is a spiritual book and you need the Holy Ghost you know our Father our Lord Jesus Christ and the what Lord is that spirit okay let's continue not of works lest any man should boast the works that are being described are the works of the law it says in Romans for by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified the Lord rebuke you Jesuits your time coming for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus you know you're born again put on the new man okay for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works you know getting busy for the Lord especially in these times before the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble okay some of you are sitting on your duff and these are not good works for salvation of course not no the Lord is guiding you on to them okay for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them okay and a lot of you brethren are getting busy a lot of you brethren are doing things yes for example brother Aaron judge the Lord has call is calling him to define the Godhead okay okay brother Brian in recent videos is talking about you know sanctification and surviving before we are caught up okay brother Alexander is reading the Word of God brother Alan is also reading the Word of God brother Michael is going through the Word of God answering questions okay brother Bob is uh, having fellowship with the brethren okay okay brother Justin okay he's part of the fellowship being firm in the faith okay the Lord has called us to different functions within the body I've addressed that with you already before okay but see brethren we need boldness and we need to go where the Lord is calling us to go especially in these times okay because again about the house of God again okay for me to speak to you the same thing is not grievous but necessary okay okay I don't care what you think of me I don't care if you come at me it's like oh well bread you got nothing more you, get your head out from betwixt your buttocks okay I love you remember in 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 on to verse 20 about judgment beginning in the house of God what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit God our Father our Lord Jesus Christ which ye have of God what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God and ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's okay why first Thessalonians chapter 4 brethren we got to remember <clears throat> the enemies of the Lord who are going to be left behind I, I I've, I've addressed the tactics of Antichrist so you can recognize them okay okay it's one thing to type out in a comment 
Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. It's another thing to confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Brethren, we can't be sidetracked with these antichrists who are poking at you, who are using antichrist tactics. Okay? Tactics that are similar to the Catholics in action, the CIA here in America. Interrogation tactics, mind control tactics, subversion tactics. We can't be sidetracked with them. We have to let them alone and let them spew out their poison. They're condemning themselves. Okay? Okay? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay? We're going to read this whole thing. Uh-oh, it's at 36 minutes. What? You got to check the news? Huh? Huh? You got to check something else, huh? You got something else to do, right? You're too busy. You're too busy, busy, right? You got to go get your toilet paper and hand sanitizer, right? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Go there, of course. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Okay? Uh, actually, hold your place there. No, 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 never mind. We'll get to that. We'll get to that, okay? We'll get to that. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Okay, let's continue. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the... Commandments? Uh-oh. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification... How's your walk of sanctification going, Christian? I'm struggling with it every single day. What about you? Okay? For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Okay? What? Oh, sexual, right? Let's continue. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lusts, or excuse me, not in the lust of concupiscence. Concupiscence. Extreme. Want. I want. I want. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I want. I want. I want. Okay? Vile. Concupiscence is vile. Okay, let's continue. Even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, being separate than, other than, being set apart, okay? Not holding your nose up and uh, puffing at people because you're so much better. Let's continue. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. <laughs> See, brethren, those enemies of God, Antichrist. They don't despise us. They despise the Lord. And hold your place there really quickly. We have to remember this. I have to remember this. Hi. Okay. We have to remember this. Ephesians 6.12. Go there. Hold, hold your place in First Thessalonians 4. Ephesians 6.12. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Go back. Verse 8, For there, he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. We are sealed until the day of redemption. And our redemption draweth nigh, brethren. Hello! Let's continue. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Okay? We are to work, and through us working, the Lord will provide. But see, here in America, all a lot of jobs are closing. Isn't that right, my brother Jeff? And if you see this, my brother, I was going to put this in a comment, but the, the Lord wants me to, to do this. Please forgive me for calling you by the wrong name. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry for that, brother. And I, I commend your patience with me for not getting on me earlier for me referring to you by the wrong name. Please forgive me. But see, here in America, jobs are closing. Okay? People aren't working. The Lord has blessed my wife and I because in our profession, though we are both in food service, we are not affected in the long run so far by this biological weapon that the Jesuits have released on the world. Okay? We still are able to work. And we are still at our jobs able to be a witness. Okay? Let's continue. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. You post fibbers, your hope, what is your hope? What is your hope? Where in Matthew 24 do the dead rise? First, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Let's continue. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Sleep in Jesus, dead. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain... Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Shout! Okay? We're going to hear him call our name. <gasps> okay? We're going to hear our name. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay? The dead in Christ go up first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, Comfort one another with these words. Now, look at ver, ver, uh, excuse me. Look at verse sixteen. For the Lord Himself shall descend. Time out. Okay. 
Look at verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The Lord in the air. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend. Okay? When we hear our voices called, we're going to see him when we are called and caught up. We're going to finally see the Lord. Okay? For we live by faith, not by sight. For that which a man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? If you can see something, you don't need faith. If you can see it. Okay? Like, for example, I can see my wedding ring and the wing, uh, the wing, excuse me, the ring from my mother. Okay? A reminder of the yoke of marriage and a reminder that those who you love and have prayed for who refuse to repent of their pride and call in the name of the Lord, believe on him and be saved and born again. Ah, never mind. Okay. But verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. We're going to be getting out of here, brethren, soon. How much longer? I don't know. Nobody knows. We are going through some pretty rough times. But after we are caught up, and those of you post fibbers and fake Christians, wow. Wow. Because we have to remember, speaking of Matthew 24, Matthew 24 is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. He is speaking unto the Jewish people. He is speaking unto the disciples, which were Jews. Okay, you nitwits. Uh, Luke was not anywhere among the disciples when Jesus was talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, which is what Matthew chapter 24 is about. Okay, the time of Jacob's trouble. Because find in the Pauline epistles where Paul talks about enduring to the end to be saved. See, the root problem is of you post-fibbers who vehemently and adamantly defend this post-trib garbage, this Catholicism, Jesuitism that you believe, you're antichrist and you're non-dispensational. You're antichrist and you're non-dispensational. I'm excluding babes and novices. Okay? If all you do is fight to say that Christians are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble, guess what? You fake Christians, you will be. Bye 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 bye. Good luck. <laughs> you won't need it, but we need to remember something. Go to Matthew chapter 24, very quickly, verses 4 and verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Christ means anointed one, one who is anointed. Okay? People who are anointed, who have an anointed ministry. Now, in the time of Jacob's trouble, of course, of course, but you have people saying they are anointed today, especially these idiot jerks on television and these charismatics, you know, especially. But let's continue. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. 
And brethren, too, you got to remember something. You have to remember something. Now, I'm addressing you Americans, my countrymen. Okay, go to Timothy. First Timothy, chapter 6. First Timothy, chapter 6. I am going to be honest with you. I know of men who are entangled in the church building system, who um, don't want to offend people, who say they are King James Bible believing Christians, but say, well, don't discourage people from using other translations. I know of Christians who, when you talk to them, within their conversation, they always draw it back to themselves and boast themselves through the Lord, not the Lord through themselves. And also, I know of Christians, so-called, who, if you give them a second, will take 20 minutes to boast to you of how blessed they are and boast of their riches. And there are those who I truly believe are truly saved and born again, who are sealed. But yet, they put themselves as their number one priority and love money. You cannot serve God and mammon. I know Christians like that. I do. I know of people specifically who, will, like I said, will bring every conversation that you have with them back to themselves and will boast of their money and talk about money and praise the church building system. And brethren, you know, if you've ever never read the book Tortured for Christ by Richard Wombrandt, okay, talk about having an underground church, you know, the body, the body, not buildings, but an underground gathering of brethren because he was in communist China, okay? And these church buildings in America, number one, are not sanctioned in the King James Bible, in the real Bible, okay? You don't see people going to church buildings. No, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Guess what? You're in church 24 hours a day, seven days a week, okay? Okay? The church building system here in America and in your nation are pagan. Okay? There's nothing good about them. There is a spirit attached to those buildings. And who oh no, our church buildings are closing because of this biological weapon. Praise the Lord. As I said to someone specifically recently who got all offended with me because I was uh, telling him, uh, you know what? The American uh, economy is about to collapse and your fiat money, your fake currency given to us by the Jesuits, by the interdict imposed upon this nation and all your fictitious credit in your Jesuit-controlled banks. It's going to go up like a puff. And I can see you Christians who love your church buildings, who boast of how blessed you are, and boast of your riches. I can just see you trembling. Oh no. My Federal Reserve notes are as good as toilet paper. Oh, and by the way, when the American co economy collapses, yeah, there's a toilet paper famine, right? <laughs> uh, there, yeah. Be careful, though, if you're going to use your uh, $100 uh, Federal Reserve note for your toilet paper. Yeah, you might want to consider that, okay? But the credit that you have been working your entire life for, what's your credit based off of? 
Nothing. Nothing. Guess what, Christian? Professing Christian in love with your little church building? Yeah, the body of Christ is going to have to go underground. It's coming. Yes. In houses. They're going to have, we're going to have to meet in houses. Online. Okay? In houses. Like they used to. Okay? Like I said, I can just see some of you trembling for all your imaginary credit given to you by Rome! <laughs> oh, and Brad, you're a conspiracy theorist. All you talk about it with the other brethren is the Jesuits. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to hear this, do you? But you got to face it. Okay, you got to, you got to, you got to get your head out from betwixt your uh, buttocks there, brethren. My country is that close to collapsing. Guess what I've heard? In New York, in Washington, and in California, and uh, those of you, brethren, who live in California, who are saved, born again, King James Bible believing brethren, who live in California, I'm praying for you. I love you. Be diligent. Okay? But I have heard that the National Guard is being assembled in both New York, Washington, and California. I have one of my revolvers out. You know, I'm not afraid. But you never know. Food shortage? And when the American currency goes bankrupt and everything, for example, my personal bank that I uh, I showed you in the video, of the walk and talk, my personal bank has closed. Those of you who are love in love with the church building system, oh, don't scare people. Don't discourage people from using other Bible versions. Don't be... Don't be as salt, which burns but yet preserves. First Timothy chapter six, verses one. Oh, you know what? Let's read the whole chapter. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, Brad! I don't have time to sit here. I don't have time for this. I got, I got things to do. I gotta go get toilet paper. First Timothy chapter six. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. I'm guilty of failing at that. I am, I confess a fault, because I have let a sad, sad, lost, deceived, wicked Jewish young lady get the best of me. And I'm there to make her jealous, so she can see her God in me. And I failed at that. I do feel sorry for some of you brethren who are behind me at the judgment seat of Christ, by the way. Keep that in mind, brethren. What you guys don't know about me, you're going to know at the judgment seat of Christ. And what I don't know about you, I'm going to find out about the judgment seat of Christ. <clears throat> Sanctification, anybody? Let's continue. And they that have believing masters... Let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of the, our Lord Jesus Christ, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. 
even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? You can't answer it because you know you can't answer it. But doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, not including the ignorant and babe, you post-fibber heretics, you non-dispensational heretics, you are perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds. That's you. You are men of corrupt minds. You are perverse. And destitute of the truth. See, there are those post-fibbers and heretics, non-dispensational, who know the truth. That's why they fight so hard against it. These wicked heretics and Jesuit coadjutors and Jesuit themselves, my goodness gracious, that uh, teach that it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Jesuits like Ed Finneger. <laughs> Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Those of you who are taken by the doctrine of doctrines of devils and Jesuits like Ed Finneger, by Vatican agents like King's Table, and all that ragtag band of um, armed propaganda units, okay? Y'all deserve one another. And after the body of Christ is caught up, you're going to be getting one another. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Remember what it uh, says in Job? Job chapter 1. Naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just paraphrased that. Forgive me. In all this, Job sinned not with his mouth or charged God foolishly. Again, I just paraphrased that, beg your pardon. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. You got to remember, brethren, Paul was homeless. Paul didn't have a wife and child. I don't have kids. Paul didn't have a wife and child to provide for. Okay? Paul was homeless. Well, God manifest in the flesh, you know, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, he himself said, the Son of Man hath nowhere to rest his head. Brass tacks, be grateful for the simple things. Food and raiment. A house is a luxury. Think about that. But now this is for you Christians, so-called, who only, always, in one way or another, bring the conversation, in one way or another, back to your money. And don't want to hear the facts that our economy here in America is about to collapse. But they that will be rich will be, will be rich. Fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. I don't love money. Then why do you talk about it so much? I don't love money. Yeah. 
then why do you boast about it? Why do you boast about it? Hmm? Why do you boast about it? For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I feel so sorry for you wealthy, rich Christians, wealthy in federal, Jesuit Federal Reserve notes, in fictitious imaginary credit in your Jesuit controlled banks that are going to go up like a puff. I feel so sorry for you. You have it worse than those of us who are poor and needy. You got it really rough. You got it really rough. You poor creatures. You poor creatures. Make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's with your checkbook or using that stupid Apple Pay at my work. You know, they got the uh, credit card machine reader where you stick in the chip, which is eventually going to be in the right hand or in the forehead. Or they got the Apple thing where you just swipe your cell phone. <laughs> That's the beginning and it's eventually mark. The mark of the beast technology is already here. We just got to get out of the way. I feel bad for you rich people. I feel really bad for you. Let's continue. Here's the exhortation. But thou, o man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, peace, or patience. Oh, patience. Meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of okay. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witness a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall shew, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Okay? Now hear, now hear this. Okay? Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Now see, there's the contrast to verse 10. Okay? Um, boasting yourself of your riches, dotting your I's, crossing your T's, making sure that you keep every little thing noted and you're doing your unrequired tithe in the time of the Gentiles or the Christian dispensation that we're not required to tithe today. That was for the Jews, for the tribe of Levi, who had a temple to maintain. And also the Levitical priesthood didn't have an inheritance and the Lord gave them the 10% tithe, okay? Tithing is not a requirement. It's not. And those of you Christians who love your money, who love your church buildings, the Jesuit 501c3 government church buildings, you write your tithing off on your tax forms to get the money back. Don't you? It's charitable giving. 
I give my money to a uh, unsanctioned church building only to get the money back at tax time. <laughs> you know, I, I beg your pardon, brother, but just, just thinking about that right here, sitting here, makes me sick. Literally sick in my stomach. And it's not because I had my breakfast yet, no. It's make, it makes me sick. Again, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, which you are showing yourself high-minded when you boast your riches and boast your blessings over the one who has blessed you. Oh, I do. No, you don't. Shut up. Quit lying. Let's continue. Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. See, they're willing to communicate, but they lend upon usury. Now, there, there's nothing really wrong in certain situations upon usury, yes. But, you know what, brethren? Let me give you an example. My beloved brother Jeff, okay? He's in the same, he's in the same line of work as I am. If I had the finances to give to you financially, brethren, just to give to you, I would. So Lord Jesus Christ is my witness. I would. I would. I would. And Brad, you know, I, I ain't got no money, man. If I had it, it's like, okay, give me your address. I'll send you a, uh, a uh, money order made out to you. I would. I would give to you if I had it. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against that time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. I love this book. <sighs> fight the good fight of faith, brethren. And like I said, here in America... They've assembled the National Guard, apparently, in New York, Washington, and California. And here in America, we have the stay-at-home thing here in my town of Woodstock, Illinois. Uh, they have a 5 o'clock curfew. And if they catch you outside of the streets after 5 o'clock, for right now, you'll get a ticket. But that's eventually going to lead into martial law. Brian Denlinger did a video called, um, uh, what was it? Eminent martial law and what we can do to fight it. I, I actually have that video uh, on my MP3. Um, and I listened to it yesterday at work. A wonderful sermon that he did. Um, National Guard is being called out. In New York, Washington, California, um, restrictions to our freedom 
for our protection from the biological weapon that the Jesuits have released on the world. And when food runs out, when our economy collapses here in America, hopefully then, come up hither. And then all you wicked Jesuits, coadjutors, post-fibbers, and those of you who are stubborn, and full pride and refuse to repent of yourself and dote about questions and strifes of words if you don't get right now with the Lord Jesus Christ get saved and get caught up You deserve what you're going to get. You and the Antichrist who will be revealed after we are taken out of the way. You deserve one another. And you're going to get one another. And may the Lord have mercy on your souls. I love you, brother. Oh, an hour and 16 minutes. I love you. I'll see you in the next video, apparently. Whenever that will be. What that may be. And in Jesus Christ's name, God's people said, Amen.